Hi, I'm Jason Mast, field sales rep for DKELB in Northern California. Today we're back at the Bear Western Research Station in our test plot out here, standing in a couple of our new pre-commercial variety. We're taking a look at root development and, and some early root vigor, and we're going to talk about how that affects fertilizer placement. Every season, I highly recommend you take a good shovel and head out to the field and dig some roots as your, as your crop is emerging before you put on that first irrigation to really get a sense of what that early root development turned into. It's a good idea to gauge what that seminal root system looks like and how those nodal roots are developing. I like to use these trenching shovels because they're nice and narrow and you can easily dig up just one plant without having to disturb all those other plants around them. We're gonna gently dig that plant up, lift it out of here, A little trick that I like to do is take a water bottle, poke a hole in the tip, and we can wash these roots easily in the field to get a good look at how they're doing. So as Barbara talked last time, remember we've got two types of roots here on these plants. We've got the seminal root system and the nodal root system. So it's a good idea to take your knife and gently cut out the mesocotyl, that's that center coming off of the seed, and lift out your seminal root system. If you separate those off, you can easily see then what they are, really judge the size and the vigor of those, how well your radical, uh, how well your radical developed, and how well the other seminal roots without them being all tangled in those nodal roots. It's a good idea to take a look at this, make sure that they're all well developed, well filled out. The seminal root system is the first roots that develop. They're really what get that plant up and out of the ground and to the first, <clears throat> and to the first V stages. Past V3, that plant is totally dependent on the nodal root system to really carry it through to the rest of the season. So these then are your nodal roots. Regardless how, how deep that seed was planted, these are always going to establish themselves about three quarters of an inch below that soil surface. That's where the crown of that plant starts growing. Now the V6 stage, those roots are going to establish themselves right at the soil surface and they're easily going to penetrate the soil surface. But from V7 on, we're into the brace roots. And those brace roots, you know, it's hit or miss as to whether or not they can actually penetrate the soil surface and contribute to water and nutrient uptake. So you gotta remember, V1 through V6, those roots are the ones that are gonna develop 95% of your root ball. That is what's gonna carry your plant all the way to harvest. So anything that happens from V1 to V6 that really limits root growth, it limits the ability of that plant to develop in those early stages is going to limit your overall yield potential. I want to transition and talk briefly about fertilizer placement. Across my territory I see three main methods of applying fertilizer on corn planters. The first would be pop-up or on seed fertilizer. It's where you're dribbling a band of fertilizer right down that seed trench on top of the seed. It's really intended to feed the seminal root system here, get that plant going, you know those first five to seven days of its life, really giving it that jump start to get out of the ground and get a really early start. The main nutrient that we're after is phosphate, especially in cold soils, phosphate uptake is limited by that plant. And so we're wanting to put highly soluble, available phosphate right there for that plant to use and get going early. We need to be very careful with pop-up fertilizer because it's, it's going onto the most sensitive roots on that seedling at the very sensitive time of its life. And so we need to be very careful that what the products that we're using are safe to be applied to seed. Another method that is very common on planters across my territory is what I would call a starter, which is gonna be a two by two band, two inches down from the seed placement and two inches to the side of the seed placement, which is gonna get you out to feed these early layers of nodal roots. The first couple weeks of that plant's life then, it's gonna tap into that. Starter allows us to use a little higher rates of fertilizer that you know, if we're applied directly onto the seed, they would burn it. But in that two by two band, they're off to the side just enough that these tougher roots a couple weeks later can tap into that band and really utilize those nutrients well and not hinder the plant. The other application method that I see commonly is side dress, which is a high rate of fertilizer needed to carry that plant all the way through the rest of the season. We've got to remember, you know, I need about 300 units of nitrogen to carry that crop all the way through the season, about 10, 10 units per ton of corn. 
And so that high rate needs to be set four to six inches away from that seed band or more. And it's really intended to carry it all the way to harvest. The, uh, an easy way to remember that would be, you know, if you think about it, your, your pop-up or your on-seed is your morning coffee. It's really a jump start to get you going in the morning, but it's not gonna make take you much past that. Your breakfast is gonna be your starter and it's gonna carry you through. And that side dress is really more of your lunch. That's gonna be the meat and potatoes to get you through the rest of the day and really get you on to harvest. So that's an easy way to break that down. We need to be very careful that we're applying the correct products in the correct placement. Because when we see burn on these roots because of that, you gotta remember we're applying salt. And those salts have a, a tendency to desiccate roots and burn them and, and dry them down. And so every year it seems we see just a, a couple of applications where either fertilizer knives shifted on that planter and put it in the wrong spot or the use of the wrong products in the wrong position. We gotta be very conscientious that the products that we're using are correct for the application method that we're, we're applying them through in order to maintain these healthy roots all the way through that first irrigation. Make sure that we're not setting our crop back. Thanks for tuning in. We're gonna be keeping you updated as the season progresses out here. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments below. Give us a call or send us an email. Thanks for watching.